we were talking about using sort of like a measured system mm -hmm. to measure the whole thing and I introduced the column, like the perimeter part here, this is only where you can go in, you see the face of the sculpture and you get the sense that I shall follow along the sculpture and that's how um, different space were being like um, covered and then the path of the thing is quite sort of defined here. Okay. <laughs> like Spanish. Yeah, but it was it was cool because then like you listen to it and then after a while you start picking up like your ears start to like mm -hmm. I still hear about this. I still struggle with English sometimes, not like not to speak it, but I feel something like understanding, like, not like, it's not the case, but I think like, having like the, um, what's that rule, like, like my ears still like not so tuned in, you know oh, what I'm yeah. saying, that's the catch with me, like so it's like three things, so I'm like, what do they say? It's like, it's like, like English to me is still like a lot of an interpretation, mm -hmm. which is very interesting. It's I mean, oh, I've been speaking since I was 14, 15. Are wrinkles fascinating? Yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting how language becomes an interpretation when, like, it's not your first language. Like, if you were to learn Spanish tomorrow, like, even if you, like, it's, could speak Spanish better than me, it'll still be an interpretation of the language because you, you're more in tune with another one. Well, I think there's, there's an interesting example of that with, like, Nabokov translated mm -hmm. all of his novels, but each time he translated it, he had, like, <laughs> Being that there's like a, a culture to each, you know, like from Russian to English to French, right, right, which right. was like the three languages he translated for mm -hmm. Lolita, mm -hmm. each time was like a kind of free writing of course, because the French language offered different things in English and Russian, right. mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Which yeah. is kind of a really interesting mindset that, mm -hmm. but he was, it's an example that like, you can exist in three different cultures at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It's also a mind switch, like being like, how. This isn't the worst time it's happened. I brought lunch today, but I forgot a fork. So I'm using a piece of chipboard. It works though. It gives it a little flavor. Uh, did we launch No, it's, it's intimidating if you look at the lens and you can see your reflection. Connoisseur. Okay, what are you doing? I'm holding his hand so he doesn't hold the wood. What do you want it to hold? It's gonna hold the carriage. For loose. 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 For loose.
should do a rendering session with Kevin Cross. So we can put, put the ultra white people, what did my say? Yeah, the ultra white. <laughs> like real white, like not, not even like American white, like real white. It's like, what are you talking about? What's going on guys? Welcome back. Episode 2 of the Architecture School Chronicles. Uh, this week I thought I'd go back and do a little hand drafting. Um, I was just kind of exploring this idea of a hurricane and disaster through mapping and started to overlay a bunch of lines, take different perspectives of the baseball field, and try to manipulate it so that it, it kind of generates something, you know? The whole idea of mapping is to find something that's not there, in my opinion. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, don't forget to leave a comment, like, subscribe, please. Thumbs up, anything. Let me know that it's going well. And I'll talk to you guys next week.